Hi, I'm Chad Zambito, Director of Development here at uh, St. Joseph's School. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 54th Annual Popcorn Ball. Hope you enjoyed the wonderful food prepared by Alex's place. How about a special thanks to the yeah. Special thanks to Matt and Jen Gray, Chef Hassan and his staff, our volunteers in the kitchen, and a nice round of applause for them. Also a nice round of applause for Heron Hale and the delicious wine we enjoyed as well. Please continue to enjoy your, your wine as we, as we move through our program. I'd like to take a minute to recognize our Popcorn Ball Committee, including myself, my lovely wife Jennifer, as well as Amy Murray, Melissa Landers, Christina Clark, Matt Gray, Steve Tanner, all volunteered uh, several hours of work for this evening tonight, so thank you very much. I have to thank SOS as well and the support from Heather Zarillo who had spent hours designing our graphics and putting together tonight's program. I'd also like to thank all of our sponsors and donors for tonight's evening and I encourage you to really uh, participate and, and uh, take uh, part in the businesses that support us here at St. Joe's. I just want to take a quick minute to uh, recognize our members of the All Apostles Society. Now, AAS was formed to ensure the long-term sustainability of St. Joe's and Catholic education here in the Tri-County area. St. Joe's is home to more than 280 students from 14 school districts, and we have more than 2,500 alumni living worldwide. Now, the All Apostles Society is an annual giving society where donors pledge to support the school for three years, gold members contributing $3,000 at least a year, silver members committing to at least $1,000 a year, while our bronze supporters pledge to donate at least $500 a year. Our gold members include one of tonight's honorees, Mr. Michael Falcone, as well as two couples in attendance tonight, Jerry and Carm Reinhardt, and Tom and Lynn Hausnick as well. Also supporter, Joseph Guppenberg. So thank you to our supporters at the gold level. Silver members include Dorothy Baker, also uh, two couples in attendance tonight, Paul and Jeanette Gerace, as well as Brian Winters and his wife Kate, so thank you very much. <laughs> also like to recognize that uh, St. Joe's graduates, Tom and Jean Lichtenthal, are in attendance tonight. They're acting as our honorary chairs for this campaign, and we are currently halfway to our goal of raising $50,000 for 2013, so we're off to a very nice start, so thank you. And that brings us to our first award of the evening. Uh, the name Michael Falcone may not be recognizable to all of you. He's not one that seeks out attention or the spotlight in any way, but you certainly will recognize his work. Mike operated Falcone Electric on Main Street in Batavia for more than 60 years. He's been a generous supporter of St. Joe's, Notre Dame, GCC, and Christ the King. Mike learned the value of hard work at an early age. After his father died, he worked for his mother to help support his family. His mother would coordinate work crews for local farms during World War II, and Mike would make his first uh, bus pickup about 6.30 in the morning. He'd transport workers to local farms and then pick up women that were headed to work at the canning factory. And once he was done with that, he returned to the farm, joined the workers on the farm in their daily duties. He'd then leave the farm to pick up the ladies from the canning factory, return them home, pick up farm workers, return them home, and he'd make his last stop about 11 or 11.30 at night, wake up and do it all again the next day. When I first met Mike, it was to thank him for a donation he had made to St. Joseph's. And in his typical fashion, he quickly dismissed it and asked me about my roots. And he said, Sam Vito, huh? Did you work on the muck? And I said, I was fortunate. Now I'm third generation. I didn't have to work on the muck. And then he said, where'd your family come from? So I told him near Palermo. And he said, ha, you're not even Italian. You're Sicilian. <laughs> then when I told him we wanted to honor him here at St. Joseph's, he said, how much is this going to cost me? All kidding aside, I was actually very surprised that, that Mike agreed to accept this because he, he's a very private person. But since this has become public and he's been so generous, I've had dozens of people come forward and tell me that he's helped them, former employees, distant relatives, that he's helped them to, to live a, and reach for a better life. Mr. Falcone truly embodies the values and principles of Catholic education, hard work, faith, service, and a selfless, humble nature. For those reasons, it was my pleasure to award Mr. Falcone with the Spirit of St. Joe's Award. He couldn't be in attendance tonight, but he said he's honored and a little bit embarrassed for the recognition. So I'll let a round for Mike. So if your children enjoy Subway Day here at St. Joe's, there's one couple you can thank. 
Tim and Wendy English are co-owners of the local Subway franchise and they've been strong supporters of the school. They make subs to order for our monthly Subway day, providing a nutritional lunch and a fun lunch for our students and for our staff. Wendy's been active, a uh, member of SOS for years. She's chaired many events, including the Walk for Education, the Fruit Sale, the Family Picnic. She's also worked bingo, making sure to bring Subway cookies every Friday for the workers to enjoy. And Wendy, there's many reasons for you to come back to bingo. Cookies is definitely a good one. Of course, together they provided many family luncheons, faculty luncheons, and they always seem ready to help with a smile and a positive attitude. And it's my great pleasure to present the Outstanding Volunteer Award this year to Tim and Wendy English. service or volunteer work here in Genesee County without coming across Mr. John Dwyer. I'd like to list a number of organizations and causes John has helped over the years, but we'd literally be here all night. Mr. Dwyer is a 1946 graduate of St. Joseph, a 1955 graduate of the University of Notre Dame. He's a former president of Thomas and Dwyer Shoe Stores and former executive director of the Genesee County Industrial Development Agency. His service record really speaks for itself. John has worked to support the United Way, Notre Dame High School, Notre Dame University, the Genesee County Chamber of Commerce, St. Jerome's Hospital, Catholic Charities, St. Joseph's, and Resurrection Parish. I first met John while I was working, uh, he was working for the IDA, I was working for WBTA at the time, and I was doing a story on the Genesee County Water Project. I had several questions. John took at least 30 minutes, patiently answered my questions, offered some insight on the project, and John, I still believe much of the credit for the growth in this county lies with the work the Water Committee did uh, decades ago to establish the county-wide water system. John's a good family man, a smart businessman, a faithful servant of the community and the church. And for these reasons, it's my distinct pleasure to award Mr. John Dwyer with the Outstanding Alumni Award. Jackie and I were here for the first popcorn ball and many after that, and that eight of our children graduated from St. Joe's. Uh, I'm, of course, a graduate of St. Joe's. My brother Tom graduated from St. Joe's. His eight children graduated. So we've had 18, is that? I was never good at math. <laughs> eight and eight are 16 and two is 18, that's correct. But I'd like to thank everyone involved in this process. It's been very, very kind. Uh, and I appreciate everything Chad and certainly our principal has done. She's a magnificent lady. But, uh, my gratitude to the selection committee, who they may have been, and my congratulations to Mike Falcone that you heard Chad talk about for a moment. Mike Falcone probably falls somewhere in the top one half dozen of the largest contributors to charity in the history of Genesee County. Now that goes back to the Woodward family and everyone since. He has given literally millions of dollars to local charities and he's a blessed man and an enjoyable guy to be with. So if you ever see Mike, and you don't see him that often anymore now that he's sold his business, but he's really a genuine person. Now the Englishes, uh, Wendy 
if I'm not mistaken, and she thinks back, I believe I sold Wendy her baby shoes. <laughs> that gives you some idea of exactly how old I am and how many years I've been around. But there is one correction, Chad. I graduated from St. Joseph's School in 1947. Uh, at my age, every year counts. So, um, and somebody actually did that. I told me they count. They did the math on it and wondered where I flunked a year. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so try to be accurate if you can. <laughs> I told Chad when he called me with this announcement, I said, Chad, the only thing I can think of is you must have had to wait for all those Sisters of Mercy who taught me to pass away because they wouldn't believe this one. <laughs> Somebody, I, I have recently reached the point of being an octogenarian. I love that word. I took two years of Latin, never did know what I was talking about, so that sounds pretty good to me. But uh, I, the best thing about, I said, what's the best thing about being 80 years of age? I said, a lot less peer pressure. <laughs> but seriously, but seriously, uh, I, I, I can't thank the Sisters of Mercy here because, of course, they, they no longer roam the halls of what used to be St. Joseph's. Uh, I thought about the differences we've had over the years. We didn't have busing. We had bicycles and our, our legs. We did not have a cafeteria. We didn't have a, any kind of a open area whatsoever. We were taught all by mercy nuns. So it's a very different time. But over the years, it's grown in so many ways and the gratitude that I have and many others for some of the Sisters of Charity. <laughs> Uh, we had a, one sister who had a better backhand than Ray Schertz. <laughs> and, I, and I'm still convinced I didn't deserve it, but I probably did. <laughs> Sometimes I, I ask people, in all seriousness, you know, what is the bigger problem, ignorance or apathy? And I asked that of somebody last week, and he looked at me and he said, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> those of you who send your children here or your grandchildren to St. Joseph's School, you do know and you do care, and you're very special people for doing so. Uh, this is, I, I'm not sure some people realize that this is truly an asset. St. Joseph's School is an asset, not only to the people who come here, the parents and the children who graduate, but certainly to the entire city, the county, and the region, because today, of course, this is the only Catholic school in three counties. So uh, we're blessed to have it here, we're blessed to have the crew that's in charge in so many different ways. Uh, it's been here and it's been viable because of a series of pastors who have really cared what's happened here. Uh, I go back to Monsignor, or to, uh, to a quiet Irishman, there actually is such a thing, <laughs> T. Bernard Kelly, who uh, Paul Gerace, it was Paul Gerace's uncle. And he was pastor here for a number of years, and he uh, kept the school going and kept it furnished and kept everything going well for all those years. He was followed by Monsignor Francis L. Schwartz, who actually built this building, and, and, and of course the new, all the new buildings here, the rectory and uh, the convent at that time, of course the new church. And we are in many ways still functioning as a parish on the money that was raised by Monsignor Schwartz. He was an extraordinary man. In fact, I ran into, he served on the St. Jerome Hospital Board with Herb Brenner, who was a well-known Jewish jeweler, and they served together. And I saw Herb one day, and I, I was talking about different things, and he said, by the way, he said, you know, that, that, that pastor you have over there, St. Joseph, said, you know, his name is Schwartz, or he should have been one of our guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway. And of course that continued with uh, Monsignor McCarthy, who was truly a school priest. This was a thing, a, a much a part of his, his vocation, and it continues today with Father Ivan. So today's school is an extraordinary educational experience where everyone and I talk to different parents who have kids here, and they're just so pleased. It's a result of a lot of people, but we can never overlook that the institution reflects the person in charge. And I've worked with Karen since she was a teacher here, and Monsignor McCarthy and I talked to her about becoming. Uh, by the way, I wrote your first contract, and I'm not an attorney. 
<laughs> That's just that. Uh, but nobody will ever know. So anyway, Karen Green is truly an exceptional person. She's made alliances and allegiances with so many different organizations in this entire region, and she's looked upon in the Buffalo Diocese as the principal. She's really a truly, per and she's a wonderful person besides. And the faculty here is dedicated, as you know. They don't make that kind of comparative salary, but they, they are extraordinary, and they are very dedicated. What do they do to the faculty, the staff? Everybody has something to do with this place. It's really something to see. The, the diocese is about to come down with a new dogma of two different types of Catholic schools in the diocese. One of them, in reality, I was talking to Karen, what we have established here is almost the model to the T of what the diocese is now applying to the entire diocese of Buffalo and their schools. And that's much the result of Monsignor McCarthy at the time and the framework when we, when we formed a school advisory council, which is in, in some form a board that operates the school. They design the budget, they do find the budget, they find the salaries and positions, they do what a board of education would do. And then it goes to the finance council of the parish for, for approval and usually for some kind of a, a subsidy. And the SOS, which raises so much money here voluntarily for the school, without these two organizations, we don't have a school. So I, I think you should all, if, when you meet these people, let them know what you really think. And it's, it's reached the point where St. Joe's is so exceptional, it is really the team that makes the school, but now that team and that school is, is known throughout the diocese for its excellence. Personally, we are all, I think, composites of our life's experiences. Uh, we're a reflection of our parents, certainly, as well we should be, of our friends and the environment we grew up in and continue to live in. But for me, I started with St. Joseph's and St. Joseph's Drum Corps and Alder Boyd time and maybe a bit of foreshadowing of the future back those many, many years. St. Joseph's had the school and they had the Drum Corps. St. Mary's had the Boy Scout troop. So there was a complete interaction of the youth of the two parishes back 40, 50, 60 years ago. So anyway, those are the things that I think affect all of us. I went from here to Batavia High. That was the high school when I graduated. Somehow I managed to <laughs> get my way through what I referred to and went with one teacher as my social development years, <clears throat> which was not really appreciated at the time. But nevertheless, I got a good education there, and fortunately, very fortunately, was accepted at the University of Notre Dame. That changed my life in every possible way, and uh, <clears throat> in ways I need not describe to you, but then on to the U.S. Army for a couple of years. <clears throat> that taught me a whole different series of life's lessons. So from that, the Notre Dame experience made every difference in my life, and one of them, of course, was the fact that I always think of, of a comparison that was made by someone when someone said, I had a dream. There's a man and a woman in this most beautiful garden surrounded by rocks and beautiful trees and flowers. And the woman asked, Adam, do you really love me? And he looked at her and said, who else? <laughs> I thought that would be a lot better. <laughs> then again, I think everything I say is going to be better than that. Well, you made this look good. Never mind. I am, the, I am the honoree, and I wish you'd treat me with a little bit of respect. But I'm not Adam, and, and Jackie is not Eve. But at Notre Dame, one in 1954, after the Purdue game, which we lost, which could cost us a national championship, a couple of friends and I were out meandering around, and we saw these two pretty girls who were very well dressed. They happened to come from St. Xavier's College for Women in Chicago. One of them happened to be somebody that just took my eye immediately. And so, as it worked out, I found, at that point, Jackie Jansen. I thought the name was sort of cute along with it all. But she was not only beautiful, but she was a devout Catholic. And she's been the mother of eight and an outstanding mother beyond any description I could make. 
the perfect mother, the perfect friend, and as genuine a person as the world will ever meet. So Notre Dame is very nice. I want to be perfectly honest, whatever I have made of my life and whatever I am today is because of that lady right there. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. John, on behalf of the guys in the room, I say, what'd you do to us, man? All that love and affection for your wife, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> very nice, John, thank you very much, well deserved. So on behalf of the St. Joseph School, our staff, our teachers, you know, we do have some teachers in attendance, and John mentioned what a great job our teachers do. If you could stand so we could just give a round of applause to our teachers, we'd like to do that. Where are they, I know there's a few here. Thank you for all you do. So on behalf of our, our students, teachers, families, our principal Karen Green, I'd like to thank you for your continued support, not only this evening, but for, throughout the year. Again, congratulate our honorees and thank them for their contributions. We'll do some prizes in a little bit. We're gonna have music and, and some wine will continue to flow. So thank you, but please stay and enjoy the evening and uh, we hope you enjoy the night. Thank you very much.